Hi, my name is Rochelle Smith, entrepreneur, professional speaker, and author. Last time, I talked about the importance of celebrating the milestones, big and small, that happen in your life. Folks, one huge key to happiness is really taking a look and taking time to celebrate those things that you accomplish and that you achieve in your life. We all have milestones, so it's important to take a step back and celebrate and acknowledge those as often as we can. This time, I actually want to shift gears and talk about something that is very near and dear to my heart. Now, all of these life happiness tips are near and dear to my heart. There's elements of them in, in all of the books that I've written, uh, but this one is particularly special. And this one is the power of belief. The power of belief. I've actually given this as a keynote various, a couple different, two or three different variations of this particular concept in speeches in the past, and it is something I absolutely think is so important. The power of belief. First, the power of other people believing in you. Second, the power of you believing in other people. And third, the power of you believing in yourself. And I'm going to cover each of these in three separate episodes. But this time, I wanted to kick things off by really, really, really encouraging you to think about those people who believed in you who've helped you, who poured their life into you, who've sown seeds, of, sown seeds of wisdom, hope, encouragement, finances, resources, networks, connections, contacts, contracts, whatever the case may be, I assure you, as is the case in my own life, you have achieved and you have accomplished things in your life as a result of other people's belief in you, belief in your potential, belief in your abilities, belief in what your destiny holds. And what I want you to do is something that I do very often. As soon as things, as soon as people do things for you, as soon as people help you, as soon as people bless you, take time to formally acknowledge and thank those individuals. Let them know how whatever they did for you, whatever they said, whatever, 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 how much it meant to you, how much it continues to mean to you, or how much it continues to help you. All right, because unfortunately, Yes, we're all busy. Yes, things come up. Yes, we have a lot on our plates most of the time. But there is never an excuse not to acknowledge and thank and celebrate the individuals who've come into our lives. Some may be gone, who may have come and gone, and some may be still in our life. To celebrate those individuals and what they've done for us, the impact that they've had on our life. It could be something that is very small. And in their minds, they may think, oh, it was nothing. But don't let that be a reason not to thank not to acknowledge them, not to celebrate them. Because folks, as I was just looking through, you know I take a ton of pictures. <laughs> I take a ton of pictures and a ton of videos. But this actually was going through, I'm actually in the process of reorganizing some of my photo albums. And this one actually is during a snapshot. You heard me talk about frames and snapshots of periods in our lives. This one is actually during my time in Miami when I was in graduate school at FIU. And so actually flipping through this made me smile in so many ways because one thing that I absolutely, yes, you know, taking pictures of different events to, to have, you know, the moment being captured, whatever that may be, but also for me, a very important point of, very important point of my taking pictures is to always remember the people who've come into my life, who've, who've blessed me, who've encouraged me, who is, and this of course is full of professors, Full of, full of individuals at FIU, within, within FIU and outside of FIU that really just helped that time period. Yes, it was hard. Yes, in terms of my struggling financially, it was very, 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 <laughs> I think in the dictionary, if there were a phrase in there saying, poor struggling graduate student, I would have been it. <laughs> there would have been a picture with me sitting right there or right there next to the phrase because that was a very challenging time for me financially. Academically, it was great. You know, grad school was easy, but just that financial, just that it was just very, very tough. And so when I think back to those people, the professors, the chair of my department who went back, went to bat for me, who got scholarships, who got grant money, who got special summer funding for me, got funding for me through the graduate assistant, graduate students association for me to go to a conference in Las Vegas. And so there's things that, that many of those folks did during this particular time but actually all the times of my life that really encouraged me and that really just helped me to become the person that I am today. And the same is true for you. So I challenge you, 
Look at your life, all right? Doesn't matter what time period we're talking about here. Think about what, was it a coach? Was it a mentor? Was it a teacher? Was it a parent? Was it a sibling? Was it an absolute stranger? Was it a friend? It doesn't matter who it is. The most important thing and the question that I have for you is, do they know? Do they know how much you appreciated whatever they did for you or continue to do for you? Okay, it's easy to kind of let those things go by and take people for granted. Folks, don't do that. When you think about the power of belief and other people believing in you to shape you, they saw your potential, they saw your gifts, they saw your talents, they saw your ability, they saw your passion, they saw your intellect, whatever the course, whatever the case may be, they saw something in you. All right. In some cases, you may not even have seen it in yourself. You may not have believed in yourself, which I'll talk about in the last episode. All right. So other people believing in you may have helped to spur your own belief in yourself. Very, very common occurrence. But it takes the other person or other people believing in you. And this is something that we cannot take for granted. And, and when I think about the power of belief and other people believing in me, first and foremost, my family. When I think about Oscar and Willette, my parents, of course, now reside in Louisiana. been in Louisiana a long time. We'll be celebrating their 46th anniversary this September. And when I think about the power of belief, their power of believing in me and how it absolutely, as a young child, set me up for becoming the person that I am today. Folks, my parents taught me that I could do anything. The sky was the limit. Nothing was impossible. I had what it took. All right. And people wonder, you're so assertive, you're so aggressive, you, you pursue opportunities, you, you just don't let anything, you don't let grass grow under your feet. You're just a real go-getter. You're really ambitious. You have drive. Well, folks, that started early in my life. And that started with a phenomenal set of parents who absolutely, undoubtedly, unwaveringly believed in me. Okay? And so I understand. You may be watching this say, and many of you will watch this and say, well, I didn't have parents like that. And I understand that. And I say this, of course, with humility. I was blessed. I come from a wonderful family. My parents, my brother Oscar, who's a captain in the U.S. Army, stationed in Germany. My sister Yolanda, who's been in management in, in the Mississippi Gulf Coast for, for a long, long, long time. I was blessed with a phenomenal family that I would not trade for anything in the world because their belief in me at a young age shaped me and shaped my future in a, in a way that they will never, ever fully understand. And I understand many people can't say the same thing. And I understand that. I'm sorry, and I know family is not something you can choose. Family is not something that the, you have an opportunity to, to pick and say, oh, I want this person. This person's really committed. This person doesn't make excuses. I want them to be my parent. We're born into families, and we can't choose them. But what we can do is seek out other people. If you notice a teacher really takes an interest in you and really will call on you a lot in class and will really challenge you and encourage you after class, okay, that's somebody that believes in you. You can gravitate towards that person. It could be a coach. It could be a does. It could be an, any number of people. All right. So family, other people, even sometimes even strangers will believe in you and encourage you and help you achieve and do things that you never thought was possible. So it truly, when we hear that old thing, it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village. It takes an innumerable number of people to help us to achieve and to become what we want and our, achieve our dreams and goals in life. And I'm living testament of that. There are countless people I could sit here and name and talk about, and I would literally be sitting here talking for hours straight. There have been that many wonderful people. Mentors, yes, you heard me say I had a, have an absolutely phenomenal family, but mentors have absolutely been so strong in my life, and my strongest mentors were my college professors. My college professors, my department chairs, who really encouraged me, who took an interest in me because they saw that I was driven, I was focused, and all my class that sat on the front row, sat right there, soaked up absolutely everything that they taught me. I have a true passion for education. I have a true passion for learning. But that is something of value that I learned. Education is important. I learned that as a child. So in a college classroom, whether I was at, you know, in, in Louisiana as an undergraduate, FIU in Miami, Northwestern in Evanston, Illinois, education is something that I'm very passionate about. It's always been, and that is something I take very seriously. But professors took an interest in me. They, they really encouraged me, 
And this during this very financially challenging time when I was in Miami, you know, I was the definition, like I said, of a poor, struggling graduate student. And I had professors who went to bat for me, got scholarship money, got grant money, got summer programs money, got funding from the Graduate Student Association to attend conferences out of state. So there are so many people. And the same could be said for my undergraduate institution. Had a professor. Actually, my undergraduate degree is in mass communication. So it was out of a traditional journalism slash mass communication school. Had a professor who said, you know what, Rochelle, I know you're a public relations major, but you have a presence. You would be, and interestingly, this was an adjunct, uh, adjunct instructor at the time, and she was actually a producer at one of the local TV stations. What did she tell me? Rochelle, I know you're kind of on this path, whatever, but I think you would be a great news anchor. You'd be a great news anchor. Now, ultimately, I looked at those salaries, starting salaries in Louisiana, and was like, nah, not happening. Going to FIU, going, you know, taking a different path. Wonderful profession, but just wasn't for me at the time. But what did she do, folks? She took a vested interest in me, and she helped me develop my speaking voice. So when people tell me, oh, you have great diction, oh, you enunciate very well, I go back and think of my professor who took time with me, who believed in me, Okay, and the fact that I wasn't going to pursue that particular path coming right out of school, I wanted to go on to graduate school and do different things, she still saw that potential in me. And now you're hearing me speak, people hear me speak on stage. Okay, in normal conversation, people comment on my voice. Okay, but I think back to the, that professor who helped to make it possible, and she's one of a number of examples of people who've paved the way. My speech professor was absolutely probably the longest mentor that I had probably almost 10, 12 years. My speech professor as an undergraduate was a very big mentor for me. But again, what am I doing now? Professional speaker. So there's people that saw potential in me, people that saw my ability, and I'm so grateful for all of the people in all of the different realms of my life. I had a sales manager, my very first sales manager, took a belief, really had a, had a, had a great deal of belief in me and put me in leadership roles. And I'm the youngest person on the team, and she's put me in roles where I'm leading people that have been in sales, medical sales, for 20, 25 years. But, but she believed in me. And, and may she rest in peace. She passed away in 2007. Absolutely wonderful. One of my former professors at FIU, absolutely phenomenal, believed in me. Once I got out of graduate school at Northwestern, he was trying to open doors for me because he had been in the industry for a number, number of years before he started teaching. But there's so many people could sit here and name who believed in me. My videographers, people who take time out of their schedule, out of their days to literally video these snippets and these episodes that you see. So folks, friends, family, mentors, coaches, strangers, people you may see on an irregular basis, take time to celebrate those people in your life. Think about how they've impacted you. The power of belief and others' belief in you, I assure you, has had an immeasurable impact. I'm living proof of that, and I can promise the same as you. Same is true for you. And I look forward next time to talking about how your belief in other people can positively and powerfully shape their lives as well. Thanks so much for your time, and make it a wonderful day.